All right, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the problem solving that surrounds the electrolysis of water. This is the first worksheet in grade 9 advanced science on this topic. You should already have done the experiment on electrolysis of water, or if this is the coronavirus year, you may have watched a YouTube video on the experiment instead. In the video or in the lab, you should have been told what electrolysis means. Lysis means to break apart, and electro means using electricity. So in the experiment, we were taking a compound. This is in our unit called Elements and Compounds. We took a compound of water, and we broke that compound apart into the elements that make it up. We broke the water into hydrogen and oxygen gases. A simple equation for this, the H2O was liquid, the water was liquid in our beaker. We ran electricity through the water and that produced hydrogen gas, whose chemical formula is H2, and oxygen gas, whose chemical formula is O2. Now when we balance the equation to make it obey the law of conservation of mass, we have two, uh, two oxygen atoms on the right, but only one on the left, so we can fix that by putting a two in front of the water. Now we have two oxygen atoms on each side of the equation, but that two gives us four hydrogen atoms on the left, so we can put a two on the right there in front of hydrogen. Now we have a balanced equation. When two molecules of water, liquid water, decompose in electrolysis, you get two molecules of hydrogen gas and one molecule of oxygen gas as products. That equation suggests the volume ratio that's down below. When we did the experiment, we collected the hydrogen and oxygen in two separate test tubes. And you remember that one of the two test tubes filled completely, that was the hydrogen gas, and the other test tube was only half full at that point, that was the oxygen gas. The reason there was twice as much hydrogen gas is because we were producing two molecules of hydrogen gas for every one molecule of oxygen gas. So the volume ratio down below, if you collect two milliliters of hydrogen gas, you'll collect only one milliliter of oxygen gas with it. So there's a two to one ratio, 2.0 milliliters of hydrogen for every 1.0 milliliters of oxygen. And we can use that ratio as a unit multiplier. Now, when you take those volumes, we also have densities. Look down below, the densities, which are found on the back of your solubility chart, if you're in grade nine advanced science, the density for hydrogen gas is 8.99 times 10 to the minus five grams per milliliter. And that density is measured at 20 degrees Celsius and standard air pressure. The density for oxygen gas is much bigger, 1.44 times 10 to the minus 3 grams per milliliter. So again, both of those densities are on our solubility charts, but we know that those are densities, those are also unit multipliers. If we know the mass of the hydrogen, we can calculate the volume of the hydrogen. If we know the mass of the oxygen, we can calculate the volume of the oxygen. And if we know the volumes, we can find the masses also. But we can use those densities along with the volumes that are in our volume ratio. For example, I'm going to zoom in here. Suppose we take our 2.0 milliliters of hydrogen gas that we said we would collect in the volume ratio. We can use a single unit multiplier, convert that volume to grams of hydrogen gas using its density 8.99 times 10 to the minus 5 grams per milliliter. If we do that calculation, 2 times 8.99 times 10 to the minus 5, that gives us 1.8 1 oh, 1 times 10 to the minus 4 grams of hydrogen would be produced. When we have 1.0 milliliters of oxygen gas, the ratio was 2 mils hydrogen for every 1 mil oxygen. We use its density, 1.44 times 10 to the minus 3 grams of oxygen for every milliliter. That's going to give us 0.2. 
1.44 times 10 to the minus 3 grams of oxygen. Now, if you take those two masses and divide them, we can divide the larger by the smaller, so we can get what's called a mass ratio. We can take the 1.44 times 10 to the minus 3 grams of oxygen, that's the bigger mass, divide by 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 grams of hydrogen, and do that on a calculator, 1.44 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4, that gives us a ratio of 8.0 grams of oxygen for every 1.0 grams of hydrogen. All right, so there we have just derived from the volume ratio, we derived a mass ratio. That is my morning alarm. <laughs> I'm doing this video at six in the morning. Um, so forgive me if things are a little rough. So there's the um, mass ratio that we derived from the volume ratio and the densities. So coming back here, the mass ratio is our last tool that we have. We get eight grams of oxygen gas for every one gram of hydrogen gas produced. However, we have the law of conservation of mass to help us out. There is no law of conservation of volume, but there is a law of conservation of mass. If you've produced 8 grams of oxygen and 1 gram of hydrogen in this electrolysis experiment, then because of the law of conservation of mass, you must have decomposed 9 grams of water. So the mass ratio actually has three things in it. 9 grams of water will produce 8 grams of oxygen and 1 gram of hydrogen. We can use those three numbers and we can pull out any pair of those numbers to create a unit multiplier. For example, we could say 9 grams of water will produce 8 grams of oxygen. We could also say 1 gram of hydrogen comes from 9 grams of water. So we can pull out any pair of those three numbers and create a unit multiplier. The bottom line is when you look at these tools we have with the mass ratios, if we know any one of the three masses, the water, the oxygen, or the hydrogen mass, we can calculate the others. Um, if you have the volume ratio, then that tells us if we know the volume of either the hydrogen or the oxygen gases, we can calculate the volume of the other gas. Notice there's no water in the volume ratio. That's because water is a liquid while the others are gases. So the volume ratio only involves hydrogen and oxygen. And finally, we have densities. As always, if you know the mass of something, you can find the volume or vice versa. Let's jump in and try using these different tools. We'll jump in with question number two. It says, in an experiment, 0 0.10 milliliters of water was decomposed, and the question is going to lead us through different sub-questions. So first of all, what mass of water decomposed? Pause the video and do that yourself if you know what you're doing. So the 0 0.10 milliliters is a volume of water, and you're asking me for the mass of the water. So if you've given me the volume of the water and you want the mass of the water, I know I'm going to use density and just do a simple density calculation. The density of water is something we should all know, 1 gram per milliliter. So that's going to be the same number, 0 0.10 grams of water decomposed. Now, I don't know about you, but my brain is telling me since I now know the mass of the water decomposed, I can use the mass ratios to calculate masses of oxygen or masses of hydrogen. In fact, the next question, what mass of oxygen would have been produced? Pause the video and set that up yourself if you think you know what you're doing. So since we have 0 0.10 grams of water that decomposed, that's the mass of water, we can use the mass ratio to switch mass of water to mass of oxygen produced. 
This is from my mass ratio. Okay. In the mass ratio, you would get 8.0 grams of oxygen from, from 9.0 grams of water. So 0.1 times 8 over 9 gives me 0 0.089 grams of oxygen would be produced. Now that I know the mass of the oxygen produced in my brain, I know I can find the mass of hydrogen also, or I could use this mass of oxygen, I could tell you the volume of oxygen because I have oxygen's density. So the next question, what mass of hydrogen would have been produced? We can do this now in several different ways. Pause the video and see if you can figure out one way to do this. So you may have chosen to do this the same way we did the oxygen up above. We could use the mass ratio. We could take the mass of water that we calculated earlier, had decomposed, and we can co convert the mass of water to mass of hydrogen gas, the same way we did oxygen. According to the mass ratio, for every 9 grams of water, you'd get 1 gram of hydrogen. So when you do that calculation, you'll find 0 0.011 grams of hydrogen would have been produced. But another way to do that would have been to start not with the mass of water, but the mass of oxygen. Since we have already calculated that, we could have taken the 0 0.089 grams of oxygen that we had produced. We calculated that in the last question. We could use the mass ratio also to convert grams of oxygen to grams of hydrogen because we know you get 1.0 grams of hydrogen for every 8.0 grams of oxygen, and that would have given us the same answer. But there's a third way we could have done this. We could have applied the law of conservation of mass. We know that in this experiment that 0.1 grams of water decomposed. That was what we began with. We know that 0.089 grams of oxygen was produced along with some hydrogen. Well, the law of conservation of mass says the mass of the reactants, the mass of the things we started with, so the water's mass, has to equal the mass of the products, the things that we produced at the end, so the oxygen and the hydrogen. So in other words, we could have said, in a third way of calculating this, that the 0 0.10 grams of water would have to equal the 0 0.089 grams of oxygen plus some number x grams of hydrogen. Right? So the masses before, the 0 0.1 grams of water, has to equal the masses of the two gases that were produced the law of conservation of mass. So because of that, we could take 0.1 grams of water and just subtract 0.089 grams, and we would have found 0.011 grams of hydrogen was produced. All right, so there were three different ways to calculate that. You didn't have to use all three ways. You just had to use one way that made sense. The first two methods used the mass ratio, but they started with different things. And the third method used the law of conservation of mass. If you know the mass of two of the three things in the electrolysis of water, if you know the mass of water and the mass of oxygen, then we could find the mass of hydrogen as we did here. If you know any pair, you could find the mass of the third in a similar way. Question D what volume of oxygen gas would have been produced? Well, there's only one way to do this. Can you pause the video and see if you can try that? What, what volume of oxygen would be produced? Well, the only thing we know about oxygen at this point is the mass. So I'm going to start with that. We have 0 0.089 grams of oxygen that were produced. If you want the volume, then this is something we did earlier in the course, we'll use density. We'll convert the grams of oxygen 
to milliliters of oxygen using its density. The density from our solubility chart, 1.44 times 10 to the minus 3 grams for every milliliter. So dividing 0.089 by 1.44 times 10 to the minus 3 tells me that there were 62 milliliters of oxygen produced in the experiment. And what volume of hydrogen would have been produced? Well, there's two different ways to calculate that. Pause the video and see if you can figure out both ways to figure out the hydrogen volume. So one way to do that would be the same way we did oxygen. We could take the mass of the hydrogen, 0.011 grams of hydrogen, and we could use hydrogen's density, get rid of hydrogen mass, and switch to hydrogen volume, milliliters. The density of hydrogen, 8.99 times 10 to the minus 5 grams for every milliliter. If we do that calculation, we'll keep two significant digits, we'll get 120 milliliters of hydrogen gas produced. The other way to do this would be to use the volume ratio. Since we know the volume of oxygen gas, we could find the volume of hydrogen gas using the 2 to 1 ratio. Remember that the volume ratio only applies to the two gases, to the oxygen and the hydrogen. If you know one of those two volumes, the other volume is very simple to calculate. So we could have taken the 62 milliliters of oxygen. Using the volume ratio, we could switch milliliters of oxygen to milliliters of hydrogen. The ratio was 2.0 mils hydrogen for every 1.0 mil of oxygen, and that, of course, will give me 124, but if we round that off to two significant digits, we get 120 milliliters of hydrogen gas produced. So either way of calculating it, you get the same answer. Sometimes you might get a slightly different answer because of rounding issues. We might get 122 versus 124, but that's okay. That's just a significant digits or a rounding issue. All right, so there we have it. We went through one complete problem on the worksheet. We've used the mass ratios. We've used the volume ratios. We've used densities. The other questions on the worksheet are very similar, so you can pause and, and give those a try. Good luck. The answers will be posted on Google Classroom uh, for you later on.